Hello, nice to see you again, and today I want to show you the Jintu Shutter Release Timer Remote Control. This can be used with a variety of DSLR cameras. It takes a couple of AAA batteries, and that powers not only the controller, but also this little screen. You can see at the top you've got a couple of different settings. So you can set the delay before photos start to be taken. You can set the exposure time. You can set how long between photos. And you can set the number of photos that can be taken as well. This beeps quite a lot, so you can turn that off if you want to. It takes a couple of minutes just to have a look through the manual and get the hang of this, uh, but once you understand what all the settings do, it only takes a few moments to set this up. The only slight niggle I had is if you're looking to do a large number of photos for a time lapse, that can take quite a while. So if you want to do 200, you've got to hold that up button for a long time. If you want to use this, you'll need to make sure your DSLR camera has the input jack. I have a Canon 80D, works fine with this. The Canon actually has a time-lapse mode built in, but I'm going to test it with the Gen 2 anyway. So here I'm going to take 200 shots. I'm going to set it off by pressing the timer. It's then just a case of sitting back and waiting. You've got to find somewhere to put the little remote while it's taking the photos. In most cases, you could just pop this on the floor. Alternatively, you might want to attach it to the tripod in some way. And then it's just a case of leaving this to take all the photos. There are a couple of differences between this and the inbuilt uh, time-lapse function. This will leave the screen on if you're using the screen and it will cause lots of beeping to go ahead, whereas the inbuilt Canon time-lapse function is silent and powers down the screen to conserve power. Once you've got the photos, another difference is the Canon will automatically produce a time-lapse movie, whereas you're going to have to produce your own film. So here's the 200 photos this has taken. I'm going to add them all to PowerDirector, and then because we don't want them showing for five seconds at a time, I'm going to shorten the duration uh, to a much shorter length of time so that when I produce the movie, it's a much smoother time-lapse. And to be fair, although the I would prefer to use the Canon's native ability. If you don't have a time-lapse feature, this does work really well. You can see there is a time-lapse. This doesn't just have to be used for time-lapse. You can use this just as a remote shutter, which might be handy if you're looking to do some long exposure shots and you don't want to touch the camera to trigger the shot because that might cause some vibration. I'll put a link in the description below if you are interested in checking this out further. I hope you found this short review useful. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please hit subscribe.